Hey folks, Stoner here with the Upstate Music Channel. I have some very unfortunate news. Uh, a band, one of the first bands I've worked with called Pale Horse, uh, the Running Lights at Powdersville Pub, uh, bass player and uh, singer has, has passed away, Tony Davis. Uh, he will be missed. I wished I could have got him here when I knew how to do a little bit better sound and I better video of those guys, but uh, I've got a little bit of him. I'm going to play a little bit here. That was Tony Davis, Pell Horse. He is no longer with us. And my deepest condolences go out to his family. I didn't know him that well, just in passing, but I thought very highly of him, and I thought he was an excellent musician, uh, and he seemed like an excellent human being. I hope he was. I'm pretty sure he was. But on with that, let's uh, let's move on. I want to start a what would be maybe a podcast kind of, but it's going to be informative. And it's going to have subjects, uh, whether it be e-flyers, uh, which is the electronic flyers, a little picture you see with the band on it, you know, uh, how to book, uh, how each band does it, um, how they set up their set list, how they do their sound, how they do their promotional, how they rehearse, if they rehearse, uh, just pretty much everything. I'm going to be grabbing band members and doing little mini interviews. And I'm going to be doing that monthly to weekly. Uh, it's just going to be sporadic, just like a show I, I do called Carolina Scribes. And that's a, where I take a songwriter, interview them about the song, and then put the song with it. And uh, that out on social media for them. But this is going to be a little bit different. This is going to be more to cover bands, and I'm going to do a featured artist. And today it's going to be two. Uh, one of them was one I just spoke about, Tony Davis. The other one will be at the end of it, a uh, member of Pickens Creek. But let's get started on copyrights. I'm going to start this whole thing out, and I have no idea what I'm going to call this show. So help me out here uh, with a name. But this is something that's going to be similar as I'm going to talk about stuff like this. But copyrights, how copyrights work. Okay, let's... Zach Turner, the guy that wrote Watermelon Crawl, former member of a band called Slewfoot, if you know anything about upstate music history. He wrote the song Watermelon Crawl. He also wrote I'm Over You, made, well, that one made famous by Keith Whitley. Watermelon Crawl made famous by Tracy Bird. Uh, Heads Carolina, Tills California. I think he wrote part of that one that was made famous by Jody Messina and whoever the heck else is covering it now. But Zach Turner wrote those songs. He, he, he wrote part of it, co-writer, whatever. He's got a copyright. So Every time that song is played in a streaming fashion on social media or your Spotify or YouTube, he gets a little bit of a piece of that stream, uh, money, like a fraction of a cent. Okay, Mr. Mr. Turner, um, let's say tonight someone covers Watermelon Crawl and I record it and I put it on my YouTube channel. Well, YouTube pays the copyright holder via ASCAP BMI. That's what all the fees are, are paid for. So when you come up and you turn your little Facebook Live on and you film the band and you put it out there, whoever wrote that song makes a little money. So if the band says, this is our original, check it out on Spotify, pull that phone up and hit record and put it out there. Because that band, with what's called Content ID, which is what Facebook, YouTube, uh, Instagram has, all social TikTok, if you record a song, put it up there, their content ID will ID it as Zach Turner having a copyright and make sure he gets paid for it. Now, YouTube, uh, right now I have two copyright strikes. You can have three in 90 days, and if you go over three, they shut your channel completely down. Uh, and there's not really a way to find that out. What I work under is what's called fair use. And when I film a band, I edit it, upload it, the songwriter should get paid by the social media company when their content ID recognizes that song. 
Sometimes the artist does not want those songs covered, such as Summer of 69 and Witchy Woman. That's the two I got hit with uh, copyrights on. So there's that. Uh, but And you really have no way of knowing when you upload a song if it, you know, without permission, if the copyright holder's okay with it. But most of them are. Uh, because they make a little bit of money every time that song gets streamed and when you cover it. So that's in a nutshell how copyright works. I hope that made sense. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna get in later to how a musician would obtain a copyright on their piece of work. But right now I'm just kind of covering how it works on social media, kind of a, a, a class type thing. And I hope I haven't rambled on too much, but that's how copyrights work. Real simple. Um, and by the way, I need Watermelon Crawl. Somebody cover it, please. <laughs> Love that song, too. Uh, now let's talk about our featured artist, uh, Mr. Randall from Pickens Creek. Saw it on that fiddle. It's a fiddle player. He's awesome. He's an amazing musician. Uh, just fun to be around. Good person. Uh, just really, really fun person to be around. He's a really good guy. Uh, check out Pickens Creek. They have some originals too. But check out Pickens Creek. But I'm going to put a little interview I had up with Mr. Randall. We'll call him the featured artist for whatever I'm going to name this show. So uh, here is Mr. Randall. Uh, who are you? Uh, Randall Burdett. All right, what's the name of your band? I play with the Pickens Creek Band. What instrument you play? I play the fiddle. Hello. How long have you been playing? About 45 years. Wow. How long have you been playing with this band? Mm, maybe six months, maybe. Do you play any other instruments? Yeah, I play a little bit on guitar and banjo, mandolin. Did you take lessons or were you self-taught? Um, an old man come to my house and taught me how to play seven songs, one song a week. And then he said, I know as much as he did then. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. And then you I, remember how, I started you, going to square dances then and picking up other stuff. Did, did you pay that guy anything for the lesson? No. Uh, you did it for free? Yeah. You remember how much your first instrument cost? $75. Was it a fiddle? Yeah. What's your favorite song to play? Uh, probably the Orange Blossom Special, I guess. And who's your favorite local band besides Pickens Creek? Uh, we'll go with Dirty Grass Soul, I guess. That's it. Cool, man. You're killer. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that was a featured artist, and I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you got something out of this. And to Mr. Tony Davis's family, my deepest condolences and all that knew him, I know he'll be missed. I teared up a little bit when I seen it because I, I, I thoroughly enjoy I, I, it. was a very memorable show with them. But check out Pickens Creek when you get a chance. Uh, they have an a EP out. A couple of good songs you should check out is Blackwater Woman. Uh, Guitar Man's really good. I use it a lot. Um, Pickens Creek is really good. And they've got a few other originals they've written that are coming. But check out Pickens Creek, and I hope you understand a little bit more how copyrights work and how the Upstate Music Channel works in a nutshell. But thank you for watching, and I'm about to go do some stoner things before the gig starts. See you on stage somewhere, probably at Wild Country. Thank you so much for watching the Upstate Music Channel.